Coding and app development is the gateway into a future of possibilities. And if you don't know how to do it, or you feel like you've missed the boat and you don't know how to code, well, the good news is you don't actually need to. Today, we're going to show you how to build your own app using nothing but ChatGPT Pro account and a few free websites. It all starts with step one, and that is ChatGPT. You're going to go into your ChatGPT account and you're going to ask it to help you brainstorm some ideas for an app. Once you've chosen an app and an idea that you quite like, you're gonna go ahead and put in some very specific instructions. So in my case, we're going to create a language learning app specifically teaching people how to speak Portuguese. So what I'm going to do is ask ChatGPT to create this, but very important, then I'm going to ask it to create or generate the responsive code for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And as soon as I press enter, ChatGPT is going to go ahead and make the magic happen. And look at that. All the code has been written for you. Now, once that's happened, you're going to go over to codepen.io. Now, great thing about it is codepen.io is free. And as soon as you're here, you're going to go over to the left to start coding. And now you're going to grab your HTML code and you're going to place it in on the left. You're going to do the same thing with your CSS code. And you're going to do the same thing with your JavaScript. And now if we pull this bottom section up, you'll be able to see, look at that, word of the day. And it gives me not only the word, but it gives me the meaning and it shows a sentence of how it would be applied. So that's pretty cool, but I'd like to do a little bit more with this app. So I'm going to go into ChatGPT and now I'm going to create kind of like a database of vocabulary. So first thing I'm going to do is put in a prompt asking ChatGPT for a list of 30 important practical words that people can learn. I want it to be practical so people can actually learn in this app. Uh, I'm going to ask it for the meaning and all of this into a table. So ChatGPT is going to go ahead and populate that for me, which is brilliant. Then I'm going to ask it to update the generated HTML, CSS and JavaScript for the app. And as soon as I've done that, ChatGPT goes ahead and complies beautifully. And before we go on, if you are enjoying this tutorial, remember to hit on that subscribe button so you can get more videos just like this. So let's carry on. Okay, now it tells me a final step over here. The great thing about it is if ChatGPT gives you a final step that you need to do and you don't know how to code, uh, you can ask it to do this exactly for you, right? So I've put in, can you fill in this JavaScript array for me? And look at this, it goes ahead and it fills in the JavaScript. Now, even if you are a coder and you understand uh, programming, this is gonna save you a ton of time just typing these things out, which is brilliant. Once I have all of that, I'm going to go back into my uh, code pen and I'm going to update the JavaScript. And now watch here, as soon as I've done this, look at what happens. I have the entire database here that I can use, which is brilliant, right? And I've done this in minutes. And I'm going to change the visual aspect a bit and I'm going to ask it to create a bit of a linear gradient in the back with a couple of colors and maybe even a pop-up message when they get to number three uh, in the list to show that they're making good progress. And once again, it generates the CSS code for me. It changes the JavaScript. And now all I need to do is copy these sections and look at this, as soon as I paste it in, watch what happens here. Boom, beautiful gradient background. And now I'm just not happy with the, uh, the container. So I'm going to ask it to generate some code for the container. Now, if you've ever explored coding, you'll know that this takes so much time and you have to know what you're doing with ChatGPT. It literally saves you so much time being able to do this properly. Once I put that CSS in, look, it's created that bit of gradient with the gray, and I'm really happy with that. So brilliant time-saving affair there. Then next step, you need to save your files. Okay, so very important here, you're gonna open up a text file on your computer, 
literally in your notepad you're going to open up a text file and you're going to save each one of them separately so you're going to copy the html code you're going to paste it in here and then you're going to go save as and very very important you need to label this your index.html file for your html for your css file you're going to do the same thing this time you need to save it as style.css very important and then finally your javascript you're going to save it as script.js these are very important steps especially if you want to run it locally and eventually export it so once we've done that we're going to put it all into that file and we're going to open it up locally to see if it works and there we go locally the app works perfectly on my on my desktop which is brilliant Next step, we're going to go over to Tiny Host so that we can turn this into an actual app. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to name the app. Then after that, we need to zip that file. So we're going to compress the file and then we're going to upload it to Tiny Host. Once we've done that, we're going to click on Google and we're going to verify our account. And just like that, your app is now live. And you can visit the site to check it out. We have, and there you go completely functional our language app is working next up we're going to go to webintoapp.com this is going to allow us to turn this web-based application into an app that can go onto various android or ios devices so you're going to click get started and once you do that it's going to ask you for a couple of details first of all the url so you're going to give it the, the tiny host URL that you've used, that you've created. Then once you've done that, you're going to give your app a name. We're going to call ours something very simple like Ola. And then you need to create an icon. Now I've quickly gone over to Canva and I'm going to create an icon. We're looking at dimensions of about 512 by 512 pixels. Once you've done that, you're going to upload it. And then very importantly on the side here, before you go ahead and make your app, you can either do free for Android, or if you'd like to make your app for iOS, there's a one-off fee of about $89. So it's all up to you to choose what you'd like to do. Once you fill in your details, it's going to go ahead and make this app for you. And just like that, we now have a file that we can download that is ready to be mobile friendly. Now we're going to go ahead and download it. Then we'd go over to our Google Drive. And once we extract everything from this file, inside the Android folder, there's going to be an APK file. Now this one is going to allow you to install it locally onto your Android device. So all you need to do from there is open up your Google Drive on your Android phone, click on the APK file. It's going to ask you if you want to install it. You're going to say yes. And once you're done with that, you can go ahead and open up the app and look at that a perfectly functioning app right on your phone. So from there, whether it's the Play Store or the iOS App Store, you can do whatever you like to create an app and share it worldwide. So just like that, ChatGPT has turned your potential to making apps into a reality. We hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and gotten a lot of value from it. All the links you'll need will be in the description below. And as always, if you have enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe for more content just like this.